Welcome to this instructional video for the new Sound Tower Editor for the Pioneer DJ Torres AS1. The Sound Tower Editor for the AS1 is a powerful companion to this dynamic mono synth. Working in complete harmony with the hardware controls on the AS1, the editor provides an alternative way to control the creation and saving of your original programs. Additionally, the Pro version of the editor provides a number of features not available directly on the AS1 that will enhance your user experience, but more on that later. It's not the intention of this video to explore every individual parameter of the AS1, nor to be a definitive tutorial on sound creation and development. Please refer to your user's manual to gain a clear understanding of the many parameters and controls available in the AS1. So let's get started. Before we can use any of the editor functions, we have to confirm that the AS1 is communicating with the computer. On the editor, select MIDI, then MIDI Setup. You will see a list here of the global settings that must be set on the AS1. On the AS1, click the global button, then confirm the following settings using the parameter and value knobs. Set MIDI control enable to on, MIDI parameter send to NRPN, MIDI parameter receive to NRPN, MIDI sysx enable to on, and select MIDI sysx cable to either USB if the AS1 is connected directly to the computer with a USB cable, or MIDI if the AS1 is connected through a MIDI interface. Click Global again to exit the AS1 setup. These settings will stay active in the AS1. Close the MIDI window and quit the editor. Now, start the editor again and open the MIDI setup window. To connect the AS1 with the editor, Select the AS1 in the MIDI in port and the MIDI out port. Once you do this, the AS1 should appear online. To confirm the connection, turn a couple of controls on the AS1 front panel and the editor should respond. Start up a sequence on the AS1 by using the play button either on the unit or on the editor and make a couple of adjustments on the editor and the sound should reflect those changes. If so, you're all connected. Under the AS1 menu, you have Preferences and About. In Preferences, you can change how the editor responds to the user actions. Mouse wheel value adjustments sets whether you scroll up or down to increase number values. Knob value adjustment sets how you adjust the knobs on the editor. When set to circular motion, you adjust the knobs by clicking on or near the parameter you want to adjust and move the cursor in a circular motion. If you want to make finer adjustments, you can click and then move farther away to track a larger circle, thereby giving you greater control. Change the setting to linear vertical motion. You click and move up and down vertically to adjust the value. Change the setting to linear vertical horizontal. You can click and drag either vertically or horizontally to adjust the value. About provides a way to check the software version and view the credits of the program developers. Click on the OK button to close. When the AS1 editor first opens, you're presented with this view. As you can see, the complete set of parameters are available immediately on the editor. This will make editing your programs much more efficient. Before you begin your editing session, we suggest that you first sync the editor with the current state of the AS1. If you've made any changes to the AS1 with custom programs, you probably want them reflected in the editor. So under the MIDI menu, select Receive Banks, then select All User Banks. A dialog will appear and then click Start. All of the current user banks of the AS1 will be downloaded to the editor. At the top left corner of the editor page, you have a panel representing the OLED screen on the AS1 that displays the name of the current program. If you click on the name of the program in this window, you are presented with a dialog that will allow you to change the name of the program and change the category of the program. More on categories in a moment. Next, across the top, you have access to the settings for the clock, speed, and note values. 
arpeggiator options and start button, a sequencer play button, and a couple of additional parameters. Below this, you have all the parameters laid out in a logical order for sound development. Again, this tutorial is not intended to replace the manual on the functions of the AS1 or to teach the principles of subtractive synthesis, but rather to show you the lay of the land and the features of the editor. We start with the sound source with the two oscillators where you can set frequency, shape, pulse width, etc. To the right is the mixer where you can adjust the balance of the two oscillators, add a sub octave based on oscillator one, and you can add noise to the program. Next, you can adjust the two filters, high pass and low pass. Next, you can make adjustments to the filter and amplifier envelope generators. You can make the adjustments using the knobs, or you can click and drag the segments of the graphic display. Then there's the modulation and aftertouch sections. Then next are the effects, slider, LFO, and glide parameters. With Banks, you have a complete listing of all the programs in the AS1. There are five user banks and five factory banks. You can select any of the available banks and click on any program to recall that program in the AS1. If you right click on any of the program names in Bank View, you can copy the selected program to the clipboard, paste a program to this location from the clipboard, rename the program, and set category. Save the program to your hard drive. Load a program to this location from your hard drive. This option has a built-in safety feature. When you select the location you want to load the saved program to, the program is loaded into the editor and to a buffer in the AS1. All the parameters of the loaded program are in place, but it has not yet been stored in the AS1. To store it, you have to select Write Program from the Edit menu, or use the simple key command shown here. You will be presented with a dialog to confirm that this is the location you want it saved to. This simply provides an opportunity to assure you wish to overwrite an existing program. And finally, you can also initialize a program to a simple, generic sound to create a new program from scratch. Additional features in the Pro version allow you to view the AS1 programs by category. Here, you can again call up any of the individual user or factory banks, but you can also call up programs based on the type of sound it is. Keys, strings, various types of bass sounds, brass programs, and so on. Let's take a run through the menus of the AS1 editor. We've already covered the Preferences menu. Under the File menu, you can perform various load and save functions using standard file management commands to save and retrieve data to and from your hard drive or other storage location or devices such as a USB stick. I'll demonstrate one pair of these commands to show the process, and you can use the same process for many of the other sets of data. The first option is to load or save all data. This allows you to save out all the data in the AS1 to a proprietary file. You can archive all your synths programs and other data in one single file. This can be good for backup or allowing you to load a rental AS1 if you are provided one as part of a backline rider or to exchange your setup with another AS1 user. In this example, I can first save the AS1 data to the computer name the file, and click Save. Then, if I needed to recall that file, I can click Load, select the previously saved file, and click Start, and then wait for all the data to transfer to the AS1. You will notice that the screen on the AS1 will indicate that data is being received. It's important to remember that saving and loading saves the current state of the editor not necessarily the current state of the AS1, unless you have uploaded the AS1 to the editor as suggested earlier in this video. 
The next option is to load and save the entire editor as a SysX file. SysX is short for System Exclusive and again is a proprietary file format for a particular device, in this case the AS1. Once you select the SysX file you want to load, you are presented with this screen. To simply load all the SysX file into the AS1, select Load All. You'll be presented with this dialog. Click Start and wait for all the data to transfer to the AS1. The other option I have is to transfer single banks to their original or alternate bank location. As an example, I can transfer User Bank 1 to User Bank 4. Load and Save Single Program Options allows you to save the currently selected program to your computer or to reload it. When you reload a program, the program is loaded into the editor and sent to a buffer in the AS1 so you will be able to hear it and make additional edits if you wish, but it will not be stored in the AS1 until you write it using the right program under the Edit menu. Load and Save Program Bank works similar to Load and Save Single Program except you can select complete program banks containing 99 programs. You can swap full banks from one location to another if you wish. For example, if I wanted to put the contents of Bank 4 into Bank 1, just save out Bank 4, then load Bank 1 using the Bank 4 file. Again, Loading these banks only load the programs into the editor. If you wish to upload the changes you make to the AS1, you would need to select MIDI, Transmit Bank, then select the bank you wish to transfer, or All User Banks to load all four at once. Under the Edit menu, Copy and Paste Program allows you to copy one program to the clipboard and paste it to another slot. Write Program makes an edited or transferred program residing in the AS1 buffer to a specific program slot in one of the user banks. Selecting Write Program brings up this dialog where you can select the user bank and slot you wish to save it in. You can also change the name and select a category when you save. Under the MIDI menu, MIDI setup was covered earlier. Receive Current Program will transfer the currently selected program on the AS1 into the editor and Transmit Current Program will upload the current program selected in the editor to the AS1. The Receive and Transmit Banks options allow you to download and upload banks to and from the AS1 in the editor. The Parameters menu is a second way to call up the various editing panels of the AS1 editor. Shown are also the key commands that make navigating around the editor more efficient. Options provides full screen mode, just click Escape to go back to the standard view. And vPiano. vPiano brings up a virtual keyboard on screen that you can touch to play, or it will show the notes being played on an external keyboard connected in your system. There are modern pitch wheel bends, options to adjust MIDI channel, velocity, and octave, as well as the ability to adjust the opacity. The Sequencer screen allows you to quickly modify the number of steps in the sequence, notes, velocity, tie, and slew for each step. Notes can be adjusted by simply clicking and dragging the note to a new location. Please notice that if you are moving a tied note, you must click to the furthest square to the left to drag. Velocity of each note can be adjusted with this slider. Tied notes can be set up simply by turning on the tie indicator to the right of the starting note. Slew allows you to select specific steps that initiate the glide feature between steps. Like clicking on tied notes, you must select the slew on button to the furthest left segment of a tied note. Let's just select a sequence and try a few things.
I just wanted to take a moment to show a couple additional features on the Pro version of the AS1 editor. We already discussed the extra category feature in the Banks window, but you also have Librarian, which allows you to quickly organize your programs in whatever way best suits your needs. Phantom allows you to create an additional 99 banks of 99 programs each. Templates allows you to select sequencer, ARP, or filter templates from any of the programs and then transfer it to another. Sound Generators is the main feature of the Pro version and allows you to create new and unique sounds by blending the parameters of two programs in various ways and generating new original programs. Global settings are parameters that are in place regardless of what program you may select. When making adjustments in this page, be sure not to change MIDI parameter send, MIDI parameter receive, MIDI sysx cable, and MIDI out select. Changing any of these will disrupt communication between the editor and the AS1. You can freely change all the other parameters as you require. A very convenient feature is the ability to select the programs that will be recalled from the AS front panel 13 note keyboard. Simply select a key you wish to use to call up a favorite program. Then from the dialog box, select the bank and program you wish to assign. Whether you use the free editor or the pro version, your ability to navigate and control your Pioneer DJ Torres AS1 will be fun, faster, and very intuitive. So reach inside your AS1 with this great new editor from SoundTower. It's that easy.